Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 20. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be the children of Israel, or of the strangers, Gentiles, that sojourn in Israel, the land, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, that's that God where they give their children to the fire of his belly, he shall be put to death, capital punishment, the people of the land shall stone him with stones, and that's a that's a violent death. You'll be throwing rocks at you till you die. Not quick as like an injection. God never intended capital punishment to be nice and easy. And I, God, will set my face against that man that gave his seed to Moab. And will cut him off from among his people, even the stranger. Because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile, defile my sanctuary. And to profane my holy name. There are children today that are given over to education and science. And away from God. To evolution instead of the creator. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man, I didn't see it, protect him, stay outside of prison with signs, oh, he ought not to die. When he giveth of his seed unto Molech, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man, and against his family, and will cut him off. And all that go a whoring, there's that word again, a whoring, it's spiritual adultery, after him to commit whoredom with Molech among their people. So God is violently, angrily wrathful against anybody who kills their children in the name of small G-O-D. And he, he acquires that as whoredom. And when we go to chapter 19, verse 29, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Now here's that sexual whore. Least the land be full of, be fall to whoredom. You know, that's a woman, you know, she stands in a street corner and sells herself for sexual gratification. Well, here are people who sell themselves for a spiritual application against God the Father and when they go to the religious church and services they will give something to that God and not to God and here it's children and when somebody goes to a religion I'm not saying church I'm saying religion and they give their money their time their effort to a small GODS God calls you a whore. See, you either got religion or you got Jesus Christ. There's no, the Bible speaks about a table of God or a table of gods. There's no middle ground. And we must realize that in the realm of religion, you're a whore. And when the book of Revelation that everybody loves, 
and wants to hear about. When you got that one world religious system and God says she's the whore. And here's her daughters and her children. One of the children of that great whore of Leviticus 20 is Molech. Because you're going whoring after him and you're in whoredom of the great whore. From that whore is Satan. That whore of Revelation is Satan's bride, Satan's city. And from her comes all religions. You can trace her all the way back to Genesis. You can trace her back to Babylon. You can trace her back. I'm trying to remember that king's name. I can't think of it right now. Uh, Revelation 10 of Sinar. And then my mind just goes. So here is a God that, that people of the land are, are giving their children to, burning them. And God calls it horror. And the soul that turneth after such as has familiar spirits, psychics, Ouija boards, crystal balls, tarot cards, tea leaves, bumps on the head, psychic hotline, and after wizards. We saw this in chapter 19 again. To go a whoring after them. So you go up to a Christian, is it wrong for a woman to sell herself? Is it wrong for a guy to buy a woman for sexual pleasures? Oh, yeah, 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 that's wrong. It's evil. It's sin. Is it wrong to go to that movie where it's all wizardry? Oh, no, my children love it. Is it wrong for an abortion to kill a child? Oh, yeah, 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 that's sin. Is it wrong to sit back and watch two witches fight for a girl to go to a wizard? Oh, no, 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 that's, that's entertainment. And yet God calls that, that post-abortion, verse 5, you're killing the child after he's been born. And he says, that's whoredom, that's hoary. And he says, when it comes to the, the witchcraft and comes to the wizards, he says, to go a whoring after them. That matches verse 5. And that matches verses 19, verse 29, where you go out and sell your daughter for sexual pleasures. That's all lumped together under the word W-H-O-R-E. And there are people out there who will have magic and wizardry in the name of Jesus Christ as Christian. What did God say? Whoring. That's not a good Christian word, a whore. After them. Who? Who? Those people that, that do these things. You're paying them. Just as much as you pay a woman to have sex with her. You're paying these people. God lumps that sexual sin with this sin. Then Watch this. Then I, God speaking, will even set my God speaking face against that soul. How can you say as a Christian that wizardry, seancy, that's a word, the search of the spirit world is okay as a Christian when God has set forth in his word that it's called whoring and I will set my face against that person that does it. And then a Christian will run, oh, you know, it's in the law. We're under grace. And then you will go after the person that got the tattoo and say a man should not print marks on his skin, blah, 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 blah. That's in the law, too. Just as much as this is in the law. In the realm of Christendom, that's a famous word, is going after this wizardry today, which is the eyes of Satan. And notice how we got Molech. You're giving your child over to Molech. And now you're giving yourself to another realm of that great whore. To the spirit world. New ageism. 
I will set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. You go to hell. You need to get out of that stuff. Definitely, God has shown his disapproval. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. Get away from that job. Now, Israel is involved in this stuff through Egypt. And God has acknowledged you're doing some of these things. That calf that Aaron made. Get out of that stuff. Get away from it. Get holy. Get right. And what we have today for the church is 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is able and just to forgive us our sins. Get out of it. Get away from it. Repent. For I am the Lord your God. Not those gods anymore. Not that spirit world. Get out of that. It's me, God. You shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctifies, set apart you. For everyone that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Wow. God is strict when it comes to children. His blood shall be upon him. Cursing your mother and father. Shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood shall be upon him. That's a verily, verily. It would be good enough just to say, everyone that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death, and his blood shall be upon him. But God has said, shall be surely put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. He's put the guilt on him, and then his blood shall be upon him. You know why children today are running around the wickedness that they're doing today? Because there's no fear and there's no correction. And somebody who's been in the prison ministry, I laugh at the word correction institute because there is no correction. And the application here for a child has done this for other children to say, hey, where is Elijah in class today? Oh, did you hear what? He cursed his parents. Oh, what, where, where is he? They killed him. <gasps> what? What? And that would make the other kids in the classroom, in the synagogue, and in the Jewish nation, amongst the tents and amongst the tribes of the land, of the land, say, I better not do that. Make you think twice. And the man that commits adultery with another man's wife, even he that commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, that, that violates the Tenth Commandment. Now this is a problem we had. In Jesus' time, they brought to Jesus a woman caught in the act of adultery. Now, uh, let me try to be clean as I possibly do it. There was a man and a woman involved in a sexual activity. One of them was married. And the other person involved was not their wife or husband. The adulterer and the adulteress. They bought the adulteress. Now the adulterer may have been one of them. But the one that they handed over to Jesus was the adulteress. So I'll surely be put to death. They didn't bring everybody that was involved. So they violated the law of themselves to try to trick Jesus. That is the spiritual condition of Israel in Jesus' time. We split the law, this verse, 10, in half. So we can try to catch him. Now the reason why they did that is, okay, the law is strict. Death. So if Jesus says, take that woman and stone her. Well, you didn't get the other guy. And look how cruel Jesus is. Imagine loving Jesus, healing the blind, and taking care of the lepers, and feeding everybody. Told them to stone that woman. Right, that's just, And they didn't bring the man. So look how bad Jesus is. And it, Jesus said, well, let her go. Then they would say he violated the law. That half they got. <laughs> and, G and we know Jesus stooped down the ground. And many people think this is what he wrote. I don't know. It doesn't say what he wrote. But I can assume. Maybe he started listing their sins because he said, He that without the sin, 
cast the first stone. Jesus said that this penalty here was to be stoning. And it's remarkable that Jesus did not say, um, excuse me guys, you're missing somebody here. And you would bring assumption again and plead the blood of Jesus Christ if I'm wrong about this assumption. Because assumption you can make an ass out of you and me. But probably one of those guys that brought her was the adulterer. But they brought him just to catch him. And the man that lies with his father's wife, Reuben, that man in the Corinthian church, has uncovered his father's nakedness. We're going back to chapter 18 again. Must be very serious. We're repeating chapter 18. We've already talked about this. Now watch. Let's look at the law and grace for a minute here. Because Paul had a problem with a church. I forget. It's, I, I, I write it down. I think it's Ephesians. I'm not sure. Or the Colossians. They went back to the law. And they were deceived. So let's look at the law here. The man that lies with his father's wife has uncovered his father's nakedness. True statement. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Capital punishment for sleeping with your father's wife. Is that what happened to the Corinthian church? Absolutely not. Paul says you de-church him. I'm going to turn him over to Satan. That he doesn't mess up the rest of his spiritual life at the judgment seat of Christ. But the guy got right. When the guy got right and repented of his sins, 1 John 1, 9, he was allowed to come back into church. And Paul says help him. Edify him. The law. Kill him. And their blood shall be upon them. You say, well, what's remarkable about that? We talked to a guy Friday. Yesterday. November 24th, 2017. Now he goes to a church that puts Baptists, Christians, under the law. And I bet if anybody would come walking through that church and say, hey, I slept with my father's wife, I bet you they would not kill him. But that's the law. And yet the church in Corinthians, it happened. And grace allowed the man to repent and get right with God. I want to be under grace. I want the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse me. I don't want to commit a sin and have to be capital punishment, stoned. I don't want to be stoned. Never mind. And then die and go off into hell. There's a difference in the law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We're looking at the Ten Commandments again. Spelled out even more. If a man also lie with mankind. As he lieth with women. Sodomy. Gay. Queer. Did I skip 12? Okay, let's go back to 12. If a man lie with his daughter-in-law. Both of them shall be put to death. They have wrought confusion. You see what God calls it? Calls it confusion. Their blood shall be upon them. Father, you do not need to be with your daughter-in-law. It's, it's confusion. Get your own proper wife. And we're looking at the, at the realms of outside the marriage bed. And Hebrew says the marital bed is honorable to God, but adulterers and, and whoremongers, whoremongers, whoremongers. Let's go, let's see that, Hebrews 13, because that is going right along with what we're reading in this chapter. See, 12 or 13. We've already seen whoremongers. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Now let's put this in the context of Leviticus 20. Now let's look at what, what is the title of this book? Hebrews. Doesn't say church. 
Doesn't look like church. So to the Jewish people, Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable in all. Husband and wife can do whatever they want behind that closed door between the husband and the wife and no one else. What about this? It's honorable. She does this. It's honorable. He does that. It's honorable in the eyes of God. And that's what we're talking about right now. We're talking about people who stepped out the marriage bed. But whoremongers. Have we seen whoremongers in this chapter? Okay. We've also seen in chapter 19 is someone paying for sex. Paying for sex and giving yourself over to false gods and adulterers God will judge. You know, you can commit spiritual adultery let me put it like this for the Christian. Aren't we the bride of Jesus Christ? And what do you do if you sleep around with Satan's servants? Isn't that a form of adultery? And for the Christian, isn't 1 John 1, 9, say, Lord God, I committed that sin. And I am truly sorry. I don't want to do it. I'm sorry that I did it. God is able just to forget. And if it's under the blood, God's not going to judge it. It's gone. But under the law, boom. You're carried over. Only David had the sure mercies. And it's funny how Hebrews says marriage bread, whoredom, and adultery. And that is exactly what's matching our chapter today, Leviticus 20. But see, so, but so many people, they're in the realm of sex. Sex sells. Sex is entertaining. Sex is in your television, your movie. But we don't get in the realm of religion. In the realm of religion, when you are not worshiping God, and you're worshiping something else other than God, that's adultery and that's whoredoms. Verse 13, if a man also lie with mankind, as he lies with a woman, that's a sin. Sodomy, homosexuality is a sin. We're going to see that in a minute. But in the church age, 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins. And you forsake it and leave those sins. Repent. That's the word. Both of them have committed abomination. <coughs> So again, when you get people marching around saying that we are homos for God, God loves gays too, not according to the scriptures. You are not showing the realms of the heart of repentance, of getting right with Jesus Christ. You are endurishing, you are loving your sins, and that is not a mark of a saved Christian. The works of faith would be, I got to get out of this. I got to get away from it. I got to stop it. And if I can't stop it, I'm going to battle it with the blood of Jesus Christ and try to get right. I'm not going to pray it around it. But other than that, America fruits upon abomination of what God says. And you can't call yourself a Christian nation when you are taking the side of Satan and what God says is an abomination. No way. They shall surely be put to death. Would you do that today? Look at the realm of what it's done. It's widespread. They came out of the closet and they're trying to push Christians in the closet that they came out of. What do you think God approves of? So you advocating killing? I'm not advocating nothing. I'm advocating bringing them the gospel. Preach the gospel to them. And preach to them that their sin is a sin and it's an abomination of God. And don't fraud it. you got to put laws against it. And that just turn people off. If a man take a wife and her mother. That's gross. It is wickedness. And I guarantee there's somewhere in the world that's, that's going on today. They shall be burnt with fire. Ouch. And then they die and wake up in the fire of hell. 
That's a serious offense. Think about it. You burn them with fire, they are they are tortured with first, second, and third degree burns until they take their last breath. And when they take their last breath, they wake up in hell. No wonder the liberals don't like the Bible. But can't you see how serious God is with sin? As much as the sexual sin, as much as you find the word wizards and whoredoms. And small GDOS, GODS, God is serious with sins. He says, be holy, for I am holy, and what we're reading now is not holy. And we saw one of these sins going on in the Corinthian church. And they were allowing it. It is wickedness. We need more preachers to say what is wickedness and what's an abomination. That's not happening today. They shall be burnt with fire, both he and they, the two women, that they that there be no wickedness among you. A double wickedness. Verily, verily, wickedness, wickedness. If a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death. And ye shall slay the beast. <laughs> Get rid of both of it. That beast had nothing to do with it. He had no idea what he was doing. But you get rid of both of them. And if a woman approach unto a, any beast. Any beast. That woman in Revelation. The whore is sitting upon a beast. Uh huh. Woman and beast. Ooh, what's going on there? Yeah. Uh -huh. A woman approach unto any beast and lie down there too. Thou shalt kill the woman. The Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. What did God just say? She's in sin. She's in wickedness. So evidently there's a different kill with your definition of kill and what the Bible says thou shalt not kill. There's a difference between plan out murder and execution. Now let's go to Romans chapter 13 real quick. And we'll see how God feels about execution. Is it Romans 13 or 11? 13 I think. It. Romans 11, 13. Romans 13. Yeah, Romans 13. Let's see what God feels about execution. Verse 1. Let every soul, save their loss, be subject unto the higher powers, president, mayor, governor. For there is no power but of God. God's the one that put them in power. The powers that be are ordained of God. You received your ordainship for this pastor? Yeah. There's an ordaining of powers. Of unsaved people in the government. Whosoever therefore resists the power. Resists the ordinance of God. And they that rich shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works. I don't care if a police car came in front of my house right now. I have not done anything wrong worthy of crime. But to the evil, wilt thou then be not afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Do good. Don't, don't be unlawful. Do right. Then if you do right, there's no fear. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. They're supposed to protect us. That's a whole different thought. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. You're going to break the law? Be afraid. For, the, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute. Wrath upon him that doeth evil. That verse right there is God's approval for today's government. 
you are to execute and they use that word where the texas is going to have an execution ohio will have an execution and whatever state is going to have an execution they even use the bible word and god says do it if that man is evil and he's broken the law and we are under grace and God has given the government powers in the church age to execute people who have violated the law. Not the church. We preach the gospel. But if somebody has violated the law, God has ordained to that government, whatever the government is, you are to execute those, those people who are breaking the law. He say, well, they don't do it. That's between them and God at the great white throne judgment. But they've been ordained just as much as your pastor's been ordained. So God has given that power in Romans 13. What do you think these sins are going on in the nation today? And with that power of execution, they're not doing that execution. Given and ordained by God. And then you wonder why your country's in the mess they are today. If there's one thing I do know before the law. After Noah got out of that ark, during the law, after the law with the, with, the, with the apostles, if I do know one thing about that execution, if a murderer kills a man and sheds his blood, the execution, even the church age today, is you're to slay that man for his blood. The land is not cleansed unless the man that sheddeth has been executed. Would you go so far as Exodus, to, I mean Leviticus 20 to execute these sinners? These wicked crimes? Would England and America be in the, the spot they are in today? And only going to get worser and worser? Now, that Romans 13 is not given to Christians, all right? It's not a Christian's job to execute. It's the Christian's job to go out in the world and preach the gospel. The government is responsible for the execution. And God has set forth the law, which is the constitution of a government called Israel. That there are sins, there are abominations, there are whoredoms. And they're only growing and growing and growing because you're not, you're not putting nothing on them. Bestiality, homosexuality, worshiping other gods. There are plenty of churches in America and 90% of them are not right. They'll only grow and get more good tax status from the IRS. Verse 16, if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down therein, thou shalt kill the woman. And the beast, they shall, there'll be animal activized groups getting angry with that one. That beast has been defiled. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Their blood, the animal too. That poor defenseless animal, God says, kill it and bury that blood on that animal. If a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, there's Abraham. Sarah was his half-sister. See, there are times in the Bible that God allowed things, but now he's setting forth rules and laws. You can't do that no more. So you can't go and say, well, David and they had multiple wives. God said, hey, listen. In Corinthians, a man is to have one wife and a woman is to have one man. I don't care what David had. I don't care what Solomon had. I don't care what any of the kings of, of Israel and Judah had, had. Paul wrote to the church and said one wife. One husband. Anything else? It's a sin. It's an abomination. And see her nakedness. And she see his nakedness. They're both disrobing and getting naked together. 
It's not like an accidental, you know. It's not like, you know, you, you open up the bathroom door. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I didn't know you were in here. Oh, sorry. And you close it quick. It's not that. They both have the intention to get undressed together. It is a wicked thing. And they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his iniquity and the sin is put upon him. If a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness. This is a woman's cycle. Menstrual. I don't know whatever you call it. Period. And shall uncover her nakedness. He has discovered her fountain. <coughs> God puts it in a wonderful way, doesn't it? I think other people call it a flow. If I'm correct. She has uncovered the fountain of her blood. We definitely now know what we're talking about. That woman that came to Jesus was bleeding for 12 years. She had blood flowing wherever it was. Both of them shall be cut off from among their people. Ooh, that's... That's strict. As I said, there are island nations today. They have special huts for women in their time of the month. And they're not even Bible believers. And thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, aunt, nor thy father's sister, aunt. For he has uncovered his near kin, they shall bear their iniquity. That's going to be coming up next. We allow sodomite marriages. Next is going to be incense, incest marriages. That will be next in America. If not your animal. Or both of them at the same time. If a man shall lie with his uncle's wife. Uh, it's not on. Is that? Yeah. On, something like that. His uncle's wife. He has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. And they shall die childless. Here where God intervenes in the womb. And of the man's seed that you ain't going to produce no children anymore. If a man shall take his brother's wife. It is an unclean thing. Unclean. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. There's that one marriage again. Husband and wife are one. If she's naked, he's naked. If he's naked, she's naked. They shall be childless. Now, there is a clause here. Upon death. If the brother die. Dead. She becomes a widow. Then the law says that the brother has to take the woman to wife to produce that seed of his brother. But he has to be dead. She has to be a widow. He's not dead. It's wickedness. He shall therefore keep my statutes, God's, and all my judgments, and do them, that the land, there's their heaven. That's the Jewish heaven right there, the land. Where I bring you to dwell therein, spew you not out. Now, interesting, that spew is the same word you see in Revelation chapter 3, where God's talking about the lives of the sea in church age. I will vomit you out. I will spew you. Isn't that interesting? Because that's exactly what he's going to do to Judah by Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to spew them out of the land. Because they don't obey God. They don't do right. And the world is now, America is now following the sins of Judah. If we're not there yet already. It's only going to get worse. When the government starts legalizing these sins of the family... When child molesters are going to probably get a free getaway, out of hell, free card. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation where they are. Cana. Which I cast out before you. I'm getting rid of those people in that land because this is what they're doing. And if America thinks she's going to survive with the blessing of God. God would have to apologize to those Canaanites for driving them out of the land for the very sins that America is doing today. And he's not going to apologize to the Canaanites. 
and the Canaanites did it, and God threw them out. Judah's doing those sins, and God threw them out. America thinks, oh, we, we can get out of hell free card. We can get God's permission, and God bless America for what we're doing. He would have to apologize to Judah, his people, and apologize to the, to the nations, and God's not going to do that. The nations of the world today will be judged. And there will be nations still found when Jesus Christ comes at the end of the seven years of the great tribulation. He's going to come. There will be still nations that are doing wrong. And at that point will they get the axe put down. At that point will they be judged. Which I cast out before you. For they committed all these things. What we just read. You know the Canaanites taught Judah in Israel how to kill their babies with Molech? You never read about Molech until after Israel got in the land. And God warned them. And when I was talking to that guy at the rock and roll, I acknowledged that drums were played for this Molech and he knew exactly what I was talking about. That's history. And we see history being played out before us right now, being changed, executed, erased, and modified. I will give it, uh, no, where am I? nations that I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. Put America, put England, put Saudi Arabia, China, Japan. There's very few Christian nations around where even the leader loves God. Very few. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land. It's their land. This land is my land. This is your, it's God's land. And I will give it unto you to possess it. A land that flows with milk, calcium, growth, a mother. And honey, natural sweetener, bees. I am the Lord your God, which has separated you. There's separation. Separation is a Bible doctrine. Get away from the wicked and get with the right. From other people. Self-explanatory. You shall therefore put difference between clean bees and unclean. We already read that. Between unclean falls and clean. You see, now we're going back to the dietary laws again. You shall not make your souls abominable by beast, or by fall, or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. That's the dietary law. Ye shall be holy. Well, everything we read about is not holy. Unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy. God doesn't do any of this. And have severed, cut, split you from other people. So Israel is God's people. They are a people above all the people in the world. They are the people of the people of all the people. And God's angry with them right now. And he's going to chastise them with seven years of, of Jacob's trouble. But he hasn't given up on them. He still loves them. Jews are getting saved. That ye should be mine. If God's not going to disown the Christian, you think he's going to disown the Jew, the nation? I told not. A man also or woman that has a... Wait a minute, Lord God, how are you entering this chapter? You already talked about this. And it's okay to have those books and watch those movies. A man also a woman that has a familiar spirit. Or that is a wizard. <laughs> you know it's wrong. You know it's a sin. You know you need to throw that books away in the garbage. Ephesus took their curious books and burnt them. And God said this is how much it costs. I appreciate that. Christians have no business with wizardry. Shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones. 
their blood shall be upon them. And then we close the chapter. Before we close the chapter, in verse 22, we have his own little paragraph of something we already talked about. Get away from that wizardry. Get away from that magic. Be holy. That stuff is not holy. It's not right. Sexual sins is not holy. The worship of religions and gods is not holy. We are to pronounce to Christians and to the world what is holy, what is not holy, and point to that which is holy. 